with uh, Preka Global and uh, really understanding their journey. You'll also get a really good idea of their lessons learned and uh, you know their challenges that they had, which I'm sure will resonate with all of you at some point. And then to uh, end off the session before the Q&A, we're going to talk to you about driving modern teamwork using Microsoft Teams. Sorry, uh, everything good? Presentation ended. OK, yep. oh, sorry. OK, yeah, so um, and that's how we're going to end off the presentation. So let's um, hand it off to Res to to take us through some common scenarios. Perfect. Um, so really, we just wanted to start off with this. Some common scenarios we're seeing with a lot of our clients that um, we just wanted to start off with and it kind of um, these scenarios are what we're finding very common and with Vladimir as when we interview him, he'll kind of talk about a lot of the elements they were in a position here with these scenarios. So first really some a lot of the clients right now, especially with the digital modernization journey that all organizations are taking are they didn't know where to start, right? So there's all these different Microsoft 365 services there that are out there. Usually they start with getting their email set up and then they find out that you know, they'll purchase different licensing and know that they have SharePoint and OneDrive and Teams and they don't know where to when, where and when to use what. So it's a really common kind of theme we see out there and we help the organizations kind of overcome and really understand when you they should use what service and how. And then also the services available with the various different licenses. So a lot of organizations may just per perhaps start with the uh, Office 365 email licenses and not know for not much money you can get Teams and SharePoint and usually they actually get the Teams license, especially with the pandemic and COVID and everything that's going on. And then also how do you organize your their corporate environment? And how do they migrate from their existing systems, whether they're file shares, whether they're other SaaS services, right? Um, next, they another common scenario that we see out there is that they've gone and adopted Microsoft Teams, especially right now during this pandemic, where um, they need a remote working tool for those face-to-face -face meetings, those group chats, those conversations, that um, document management, collaboration, and they just took it on without any uh, planning. And they realize they, they get a SharePoint site with Teams, which is really powerful document management capabilities. And then they get all these teams and they kind of let it loose. And from organization to organization, we see that uh, the mistake people are doing are there's not a lot of governance and planning that goes into that planning. Um, you know, how do we structure our teams? How do we structure our back ended SharePoint sites? You know, what are the content types? What are the metadata? What are the apps? What are the channels? All of these things that um, a lot of organizations are not doing in terms of the planning upfront. And this leads to a misconfiguration of Microsoft 365 services. So it could be anything from like a student or uh, like an educational organization, which uh, is allowing no moderation of jiffies, right? So um, you can see in classes, people might, kids might go pretty crazy with you know, doing jiffies in their conversations, right? So um, we kind of help them understand all the configuration options and the backgrounds and the cool stuff that the technology has based on the environment they're in. And this kind of, all, all of this kind of leads to low adoption. And that's something we really advocate here at CreoSpark, where we say adoption and change management and training is really, really key for any service we're rolling out because we don't want to roll out a technology to your users without um, them adopting it, loving it, using it, knowing how it's going to make them more productive, right? So it's really important. Uh, another problem we're seeing is that there's multiple information repositories that all the organizations have and they need to find out a way to migrate to SharePoint and Microsoft Teams and their corporate portals, their OneDrive, and whether this is file shares, shared drive, um, an on-prem older version of SharePoint, open text, you know, whatever system they're using, uh, as well as all those software as a service or, um, services they're using, they might have accounts for, and they might have all these accounts which the org different users in the organizations are, are using to share this type of um, data with their clients and their partners with other people, which IT does not even know when they're licensed, for example, for OneDrive and SharePoint, and they want to start migrating from those, right? So um, that's kind of something we help them, we guide them through that as well. 
Next is we also see a lack of streamlined communication tools. Um, so a lot of the organizations are still, you know, posting company news and events via email. Um, that's kind of get, getting lost in people's emails. They have a shared drive which lists all their policies and procedures or something in a wiki somewhere and another tool, perhaps Confluence or somewhere that people hardly check and it's not front and center for them. And also, you know, all the different services and tools and applications that users have access to, they don't know where to get all those. There's no real launching point. So that's a common theme we see. And then lastly, we, users have multiple conversation tools and they don't know when to use what or they just don't like using them. So they end up reverting to email as their primary conversation tool, which um, once you start leaving, using Teams, as everybody here probably does, they start loving the fact that you don't have to email somebody anymore. You can actually chat with them and kind of replaces the whole Outlook email, Skype, Slack, text messages, WhatsApp, you name it, right? So really, um, Here's some key things that we th think are very important for our customers when we're implementing basically any type of portal or Teams deployment or intranet. First, you really need to start with a clear vision that kind of describes how important and how the objectives will be achieved. Um, you want fresh, engaging, accurate content, and you want it organized in a way what makes it find it makes it easy for your users to reliably find what they need when. So an example is, I know what I want and I know where it is, so they're gonna browse to it. I know what I want and I don't know where it is, so they're gonna search it. Uh, I don't know what we have. So for example, one of the key exercises we have our customers doing is, you know, for somebody who's just been hired, let them loose, try to find the various aspect or give them a give them something to find to see if they find it, right? So I don't know what we have. So they use browsing and searching through all the tools and uh, portals we've given them. Governance key. So I kind of touched that in, on that on the last slide. So people know that they can trust the content and everyone understands their responsibilities. And there has to be a tools clarification. So just like I said in the previous slide, people don't know when to use what. Um, when should I use my OneDrive sync client on my personal corporate documents where uh, I should use SharePoint and perhaps store my documents on a team where it's corporate owned documentation or it's related to a project or a team or a department. So it's really important from a tools clarification perspective. You want to have a focus on the core business. Ensure that your portal, your intranet, your teams has a focus around your core business and client solutions and all of the users that use them. You want to make sure whatever you deploy is productive for your workspace, um, for your workforce. You want to organize it to optimize your employee productivity, reduce clicks, personalize. Um, don't let them go out of whatever they're using to get to what are they what, whatever they need because every second they're opening another application, you're losing your ROI and your workforce productivity. You want to be able to find uh, and enable all of your employees to find people, chat with them, find expertise. So give them a capability to um, be able to quickly chat with whoever it is in the organization. You want a search that just works. You want to organize your content that can easily, in a way that can easily be found. Um, you want to make sure all of your search experiences are curated to ensure the relevant information is presented in a meaningful way. Obviously, training is key from an adoption change management, really key to our and, but it's not, you need to make it really easy to use from and from a functional standpoint for all your users. You know, I'm gonna be able to find something quickly. You wanna focus on tools to get their, um, to get your employees tasks done. Um, metrics, so when you're engaging within a project, you wanna define, what are going to be the success metrics for this project? Am I going to be reducing email by 50%? Or when somebody needs to find something, I'm going to enable them that to be found faster, right? So really think about it from that aspect. And then workflows and business process management. All of these tools within the Microsoft stack enable um, you to optimize your business process management from a forms perspective, from a workflow perspective from a business process perspective. And all these tools usually are available with the Power Platform and Power Automate, Power Apps, and they can all be integrated into your Teams, into your SharePoint portal, into your intranet. So really look at that from that perspective as well. Okay. 
Now, kind of at CreoSpark, some of the key technical planning and design elements we kind of go to our customers with at the forefront are we break them into these kind of four pillars. We do the information architecture, and information architecture is broken down into things like the site architecture, the navigation architecture, the search architecture, the pages, um, how they're designed, the template architecture. So um, we go into that, and we go into it from not only from a portal, from a SharePoint perspective, from a Valo intranet perspective, but we also deep dive, go into, you know, how is that going to reflect in Teams? Um, which sites are going to be backed by private channels, or which which uh, that are going to be exposed to the portal, right? So you need to keep all that top of mind. Um, you, the underpinning of all that is the governance, security, and compliance, and we've already kind of beat that to death in the previous two slides. And then the migration strategy: how are they going to move from their existing systems to the new systems, Teams and SharePoint? And obvi obviously on the ACM and training aspect, and and use a combination of both modern SharePoint and Teams for this. You have to look at both and use these technologies together as your application gateway. Um, another key thing that we've found um, that's really important with our clients is we need to educate users on the communication and collaboration aspects of the portal. So usually we start out by kind of introducing the normal Microsoft technology that people need to know when they're deploying the deploying Microsoft 365 services such as SharePoint and Teams. So we start out with teaching them on the communication sites. And we say, you know what, when you're looking at a communication sites, we normally recommend those be organizationally focused. Sometimes they don't have to be, but we start with that. And then we say, then we go into team sites and teams, which they're historically used to from older versions of SharePoint, right? So from team sites. So they're they're more team focused and those are secured. And then we go into the newer concepts like hub sites. So hub sites kind of um, the whole concept of classic sub sites is now gone uh, where you want to flatten your whole architecture out. And that allows you to connect and organize your family of sites together. And then we go into web pages and pages where sites are made out of a collection of pages and lists and libraries. So we kind of set that terminology framework from the get go. And then we go kind of break it into a little bit further, right? So first we start with the root, your root internet portal and all your functional communication sites. So when people are going to their root portal, they're going to be looking at, you know, all of the news that's been rolled up to the homepage, all of the events, all the quick links, all of those types of things. And we help them understand that's a mechanism of communicating. So then it falls to communication sites. And then you also have other different functional sites with that. So an example of functional sites are a policies and procedures site. So you list all your policies and procedures where different um, people from the organization to get to. And there's all, all these different types of functional sites you can get to, governance sites, and every organization has, has these type of sites that they want to communicate information to the entire organization. And the second part of communication is departmental communication because corporate communications, HR, IT, wanna, normally they're the people who push information to the homepage. However, each department wants to push information as well. So that's where we go into the fact that um, legal might want to push out or finance might want to push, push out some year-end information where people need to go to. IT might want a, their own departmental site where they have, you know, the Wi-Fi code for the day or the week or the policies, open tickets, you name it. So this is kind of or, or um, things that are down from an uptime perspective. So that's where the department wants to communicate information as well. And then to the right side of the equation, we kind of have team sites and Microsoft teams which are focused on a departmental aspect so these are secured to the department and all the subunits within the department for them to share information with each other um, within that department or other departments but then you also have project sites which are secured to a group of people in a project or collaboration sites or line of business app sites right and and those usually fall within team sites or microsoft teams so we start with that aspect and then we go into for, go a little bit further and just say how it all melds together where these are all connected and you need to look at that connection between those types of different sites and what the target audience is. So for the first two buckets, um, they're communicating and we're communicating to the entire organization. And the last two buckets, we're communicating to a team. And then from a just from a terminology perspective, we use the term organizationally public for the first two buckets. 
And the next two buckets are departmentally private and other private because they are secure. And then lastly, we kind of say, what are the different types of hub, different types of sites, bringing it back to the Microsoft 365 terminology, right? So we've got home sites, we've got hub sites, we've commu communication sites, team sites, teams. So we kind of say what is from our experience that they're, they're using. Now, usually this is kind of confusing to most people at the beginning, and we go even a little bit further in the next slide. And we kind of tie it to Valo functionality. So, and the Valo intranet capabilities that Valo brings you are kind of tied, um, but tied to communication aspects, right? We've got our root intranet and functional communication site. So we give an example saying that as any employee, I will use this site as a launching point to get to all of my organization's internal corporate digital assets and applications and be informed of the latest news and events. Now, from a departmental perspective, as any employee, I will visit this site to find departmental specific news, resources, and assets here. As a content publisher, I'll publish departmental specific resources, news, and assets here for my organization to see. Okay, so, and then usually those are based on communication sites, bringing it back to SharePoint Modern, right? And then on the right hand side of the equation that we saw earlier, you know, for departmental team sites and departmental Microsoft Teams, as a member of a department, I use this departmental team site or team to collaborate with other people in my department. If I need to share something with specific departments, other users or divisions, I go to this site as well or this team. And then same with the project and collaboration and line of business. You know, for internal and external users, we host digital assets related to a project within a project team site. When I need to collaborate with a team, internal or external to my org, I'll create a collaboration team site. When I need to build a line of business application with forms and workflows, I will create a line of business app team site. So this kind of brings it back to um, those kind of buckets of organizationally public communication site and departmentally or, or private team sites or teams teams. And then on the right hand side, we say how that kind of works really nicely with Valo on the Valo teamwork and the Valo teams integration add ons that you guys are probably going to see throughout these um, sessions that are coming up. Here I'm going to pass it off to Shafina to get into the nitty gritty. All right. All right. Oh, oh, that's a big that's echo. Is it gone? We're in the clear. OK, awesome. So um, I know what Rez just covered was a lot to take in. And so if you want uh, time to absorb this, the slides will be available for you. And of course, you can reach out to us at any time if you want to have a deeper understanding of that. Um, so now we actually get into the meat and potatoes of this whole presentation where we're going to have a conversation with one of our clients. Um, so I introduced him earlier today. His name's Vlad. Uh, he leads up the information systems department at Preka Global. So Vlad, um, you know, before we actually get into the real questions here, why don't you give our audience um, an understanding of what your organization does? Okay, first of all, thank you, Shafina, for giving me the opportunity to speak about our experience with this journey. I would like to say a couple of sentences about the company where I work. So, our organization consists of different companies, including like construction, architecture, design, and property management, which are all divisions of our parent company, which is Quick Global Enterprises. Residential property management and management are the core of what we do with a strong tie to our local community. With 15 plus years of experience, Prefect has earned a reputation of excellence in the residential market, properties, and around Ontario. Our property locations are selected to provide accommodation to the tech and university sectors. A fast growing Market Prick Global Enterprises has achieved building milestones through our use of modern and traditional building practices not yet utilized by other developers in the area. So, as I said, the story begins in 2003 when we acquired and we renovated our first property in Waterloo. Since then, we have grown exponentially, producing residential buildings for students and young professionals in Ontario's economic hub. Our company has a passion to help our community grow. So that was something brief about the company that I work. 
Awesome. Thank you, Vlad. So for those of you who might not be able to hear very well or you're in, uh, you know, a low sounding area or whatever it is, um, basically Prika Global, you know, they buy property, they build the buildings, they architect the building, they construct the buildings, and they even go as far as renting these units out to university students as well as uh, young professionals in the tech industry in Canada. So they uh, essentially have large projects or programs which are buildings and then they have multiple little projects going on within each building that they're building. So you can start to see uh, you know how vast their requirements would be when it comes to sharing, collaborating, um, getting things done, managing tasks, managing vendors, managing consultants all at the same time. So Rez, if you can just go to the next slide here. Uh, great, so I'm just going to keep this slide um, open while we go through a, a few more Q&A here. But essentially, uh, Preka Global Enterprises came to CreoSpark and their request to us was, hey guys, uh, can you build us an intranet? We need to communicate to our employees. And, you know, the minute we started to engage in conversations with them, we realized that not only do they need to communicate to their employees, they also have different levels of organizations. They have different departments within their organization. They also wanted the ability to share and collaborate on documents. They also wanted the ability to share and collaborate on documents uh, with external vendors. Uh, you, they wanted to be able to share and collaborate and update each other on project tasks. And they also wanted to integrate a lot of their existing uh, line of business applications. So you can see how one small request kind of spiraled into a journey of um, modernization within their organization. So uh, Vlad, uh, why don't you describe to the audience, you know, how were you guys communicating to employees? How were you uh, communicating policy updates or new important information about the organization? How are you doing that and what were your challenges? Well, you know, that's a tough question. We had a lot of challenges, but I will just number a couple of them. For example, uh, we were communicating with our uh, team members, with external consultants through emails. And I can say that was a struggle. Then uh, to store all our company data, we were using file servers. We had like 11 servers with lawyers, roles, and so on. So as you know, like uh, when you're working with file servers, you don't have so much option to tag the files and then later all search features are not present. So you don't have so much options. Then uh, access to corporate data while working remotely, we were using VPN and that was a huge problem. Like nobody could find the master source of record. They were in somebody's email. So as I said, like emails as the common problem and then basically communication with our external consultant. I would say those were the common problems we had. Great, thank you. I think everyone on the call, whatever organization you work for, um, you know, email communication seems to be the natural go to platform. Um, but the real challenges are when files are on physical file servers, having to access information via VPN. I mean, if you think about yourself as a construction worker on a site and you need to access a floor plan, are you going to log into some VPN somewhere and start uh, sharing a document about the floor plan? And making changes to it on the fly? Probably not. So you can see how their challenges were a real thing. Um, so Vlad, I know you touched on, you know, communication to employees, but how were team members, employees, vendors, how were people communicating with each other prior to this? Okay, so that's basically all about collaboration. So I would think, for example, our design department or operational company. So uh, we have architects in our design company, but we don't have structural engineers. We don't have mechanical engineers. We don't have electrical and so on. So basically all of those fields, we are, we are actually, we have consulting companies. So file versioning was a huge problem. That was a struggle to find the latest file version, which is important for the construction team. If you're not taking the latest file, then you have a mistake during construction. And that was a big problem. Collaboration with external contractors, trades, and consultants, approved drawings, for example, email problems. So at one point of time, we were thinking to like deploy FTP servers so we can share easily files. We were doing that a couple of months, but then 
we found that actually uh, the problem that we had with file shares, we have with FTP. So that was not a good solution for us. And then there wasn't a mandated defined collaboration tool. We were literally using everything what was available for us. And that's a problem. And then next thing, there wasn't a defined structure and hierarchy for people to store and retrieve document documents and everything what they're looking for. So there is no one space. Everything was like structured to different places and so on. So that was like some problems and challenges we had with collaboration. Yeah, thank you for sharing those challenges because honestly, every client we work with has some degree of those same challenges. So Vlad, uh, you know, when you guys first approached Creo Spark, why don't you uh, tell the audience a little bit about, you know, how you learned about, uh, you know, the Microsoft stack? What kind of research were you doing before you um, actually reached out to us? And just to help people understand how to, how to begin their journey. Okay, this is interesting part. Actually, at the beginning of this journey was a SharePoint conference held last year in uh, Las Vegas. During that conference, we learned what is Microsoft 365 as a modern digital workplace. Then next, we discovered a lot of opportunities to automate our business processes. We found what are internet benefits, for example, so we can use it for our company policies, procedures, and so on. We found how to improve collaboration just using Microsoft Teams. There was one awesome session and the speaker on that session was Gokhan, I think. We had like around 10 people on that conference, all of our were attending that session. And I think like after that session, we tried to utilize Teams at the beginning just for communication. So we have one spot so we can communicate or with our external consultant or without team members. And then at the end, SharePoint conference was actually our first contact with Curiospark team. Okay, great. And so, you know, then you engage with CreoSpark and then you decided, oh, uh, you know, perhaps Valo with their entire digital workplace solutions should uh, join in this journey because they offer some huge benefits to you. So why did you choose Valo and what kind of research did you do? So that was after the first meeting we had with CreoSpark team and we had a discussion about which tools we should use. Valo was recommendation. So I was doing like deep research about some differences between SharePoint, Autobox Internet, and what we have in Valo, which features we have in Valo and what's the delta between those two systems and what we can achieve with Valo features. So we found, for example, that uh, something like the teamwork you don't have in SharePoint Autobox. And I must say that's an excellent tool because you have one place for your employees to go to any resource they need. For example, from teamwork and a specific team site, you can go directly to your planner, you can go directly to your node, to your team site, teams conversation, and so on. I think that's really beneficial because like you need to you don't need to struggle with searching spot to communicate and so on. That's a really good tool. The next thing at the beginning, we were using literally like Excel files for our company directory. Now we're using people finder. We have reporting, we have reporting structure, we have all what's important for an employee if you're looking for someone, like contacts and so on. So as I said, like teamwork, awesome feature, then people find there. Next thing, uh, I would like uh, maybe like news and events publishing. It's totally different experience if you use it in Valo rather than using SharePoint out of box. And then what I like, it's actually security trimming. From IT perspective and administration side, like it's not so good when you have some links and users, they don't have access to those links, but they're still showed on your internet. With Valo security trimming, you can literally hide all its link, which is really good feature. And uh, at the end, like allowed us use capabilities to show all of our organization with a variable mega menu structure. I would say that we are a little specific because like, as I said at the beginning, we have one corporation and then seven operational companies. So under our internet, we have literally seven mega menus. 
our hub as a landing page and then menu for each operational companies. And uh, when I was reviewing and doing research of all of that, I figured out that basically Valo is definitely the best solution for us. And that's how we start engagement and the implementation of our internet. Great, thank you, Vlad. And I think, uh, you know, you touched on a really important piece of this puzzle here. So beyond just an intranet, um, but organizations who are really struggling to uh, bring together all their SharePoint team sites, to bring together all their Office 365 groups, all of their teams, all of their planner boards, all of their exchange group mailboxes. Uh, you know, the teamwork module is actually uh, a home run for a lot of our clients. And uh, it's something that, um, you know, is really nice for end users to have, especially when they're working from home and they can't knock on someone's door to ask them for a link to something. It's just been a, a real lifesaver for a lot of people. Um, so, Rez, if you can just go to the next slide here, I'm just going to talk to you quickly about, uh, you know, the process that we took when we engaged with Pika, and it's not necessarily the same approach that we take with every client, but this is what made sense for them and for us at that particular time. And it seemed to, uh, you know, the steps that we took seemed to really make a lot of sense. And so we started this envisioning and planning engagement, which took a couple of days, and that involved us sitting down with every single department at Prika, every single organization and understanding what their challenges were. And there were no limits to what their challenges were. We didn't tell them that this is specifically about how they communicate and collaborate. We really wanted to have a holistic understanding of every department's challenges so that we could present them with opportunities and that we can make recommendations on how to implement these solutions and making sure that we're focused on the end user adoption. So, you know, even though we're working with Vlad in the IT department, our end goal was always the end users, because if your end users obviously are not using the platform, then we can't really deem this as a success. So that's why the envisioning and planning engagement was really, really critical to this. We then went into um, actually installing the digital workplace and teamwork solutions and at the same time uh, planning out the information architecture, the security architecture, and then going through every organization and department site, implementing their processes, migrating their documents, building everything out for them with them hand in hand. And then we also focused on, you know, how are they going to integrate all of their project sites, their building sites, and making sure that that information is secured and managed from an information management perspective. And then lastly, we went into designing their Microsoft Teams strategy, which was always top of mind. It wasn't necessarily the last step in the phase, but that's really what brought everything together for their projects and for their teams to actually be efficient in their day-to-day -day work. Um, so the last step was, Teams integration, but it's always, always top of mind. So Vlad, um, you know, why don't you tell us how this envisioning and planning engagement actually benefited you guys? I know I kind of touched on it, but it's nice to hear it from your, from you. Yeah, I would like to repeat that because actually envisioning and planning engagement, that's information architecture. And I think information architecture is the most important part in our journey. So for example, this included site architecture, navigation architecture, search architecture, page design, page templates. And that's the most important part. Uh, part. If you have that structure at the beginning, it's gonna be much more easy to continue with this journey. We had a chance during uh, envisioning engagement, we had a chance to find what are actually our opportunities. And then at last, to categorize opportunities and to prioritize what's important for the beginning and to focus on that during the start of implementation and then later to leave what's not so important so we can continue our work and to continue with our project because that's core of our business. Great, thank you. So, um, you know, we only have a few more minutes left, so I'm going to jump around to perhaps this other question about 
uh, you're building in project sites, right? So stepping away from the actual corporate intranet part, but your actual building and project sites, you know, what did you guys learn about storing documentation, organizing them, tagging them, as opposed to having them on physical file structures? Yes, so uh, before I answer that question, I would, uh, I would like to say something about type of files that we're using. So during this engagement, we figured out that we have actually two types of files. We have something that we call departmental work, and we have something that we call project files. Because as you know, like every building for us is one project. So we were desperately needed for one place where we can keep all the important information for one building, one of our projects. And that's actually our building hub site. On our building hub site, we have all our operational companies. Every operational company has one team site and they're storing their information to those team sites. In the background, we have corresponding team for each team site. And on team level, we are engaging our external consultant. So that's basically the structure that we are using right now for every new project. One project, hub site, and then team sites for each operational company. Okay, great. And in terms of that, in terms of your project documentation and your department documentation, uh, you know, you guys use that as an opportunity to start standardizing your naming convention. Uh, you started to see the opportunities of tagging your documents with, uh, you know, building codes, making sure that the project titles were there, uh, you know, the documents that were in a final state were actually marked as final as opposed to draft versus in progress. Um, you know, you guys really took your file shares to another level as soon as you uh, migrated into your project sites. And so, um, you know, Vlad, why don't you tell us how your project sites now actually connect directly into your Microsoft Teams structures so that everything remains consistent. So basically, yeah, I can speak about that. So as I said, we have a team site for each operational company. We have various document libraries, but what we are doing with teams, every, as you know, like every team site has a corresponding team. So we are engaging our external users to teams, but we are not giving them access to our corporate data because they don't have access to those corporate libraries. And like that's our setup right now. So we have our external consultant in our teams, but they don't see document libraries that are tied strictly to our business. And of course, we're using tagging so we can easily search for device later and so on. But we have planner for each team site. We have all of our tasks on that project for us going to be to manage our project in Microsoft Project and then push the task to, to Planner. So that's what we're doing right now. Great. And I think, uh, you know, the fact that you're using all of these libraries uh, and you've got a whole bunch of hub sites in SharePoint, the integration between hub sites and libraries with metadata is still being developed in its entirety by Microsoft. But, uh, you know, we have four minutes left, so I'm going to pass it off to Rez for him to a, show you some of the lessons that were learned as well as a solution that we implemented with Prika. Perfect. So I'm just going to go through two lessons we've kind of learned with this client and we kind of go through with most of our clients on on deploying solutions to, for, like this from a modern teamwork perspective. So first, when you're designing your information architecture, you must keep, keep Microsoft Teams top of mind. The reality now is that m now more than ever, Microsoft Teams is the hub for teamwork and it's where a normal user spends 90% of their time especially during this pandemic when everybody's working from home. Like they don't go to their, they don't go to separate web pages to go to their corporate intranet. They're kind of working. They'll go there to see news. They'll go there to see events. They'll go to search information. They'll go to find something. But normally their daily work is meetings or chatting or communication or getting documents, right? So that's kind of where they're spending a lot of their team. So it's key to understand that there has to be a correlation between your corporate portal, your intranet, all of your site collections with Teams. And you need to know that you're, whenever you create a Teams, it's backed by a team site. So um, there might be a need for chatting and meetings with respect to that team site that you have to have a team backing in. 
you also need to realize that sometimes the team structure or the way that organizations collaborate and communicate may not ref reflect the org structure and the way that the corporate portal is structured. So their team's chatting meeting structure might be totally different from the actual corporate portal and the team sites. So it's important to recognize this and uh, facilitate and encourage that in organizations. Just because um, you're getting a Microsoft team that is backed by a SharePoint site doesn't mean that that SharePoint site has to be part of your portal. Um, furthermore, you need to ensure you allow this fluidity when defining your IA from a SharePoint corporate portal perspective to a team's architecture perspective. So like I said, it doesn't just because you're creating a team, you don't have to leverage the team site for behind that's created automatically for it. And then it's important to structure your portals to make it as easy as possible for your end user um, productivity. So Pritza, as an example, spent a lot of their time understanding how their teams collaborate and communicate internally and externally with their designers, with their engineers, with their builders. And then they chose a team structure to facilitate that even though it was kind of different and didn't match the exact navigation of their corporate intranet and portal and all their site collections. And then from a, from a top of mind perspective, you really need to look at, you know, which team site should be backed by a team, which team should be created initially for collaboration and conversations. Do we create one team for each department, subunit or organization? You know, what are the security requirements? Like Vlad, Vlado kind of just told us that, you know, we need it to be very cognizant because they're going to be inviting their engineers and co um, construction folks to the team. So it's important to have security at various different different levels of the um, team's architecture, whether it's from a team perspective, from a channel, from a site collection, from a corporate portal. You know, and what level of security is needed from an internal and external perspective as well. And then how do we break down our channels from you know a team level security to private channels where there might be an internal conversations. And then lastly, how do we surface the documentation and what's the cross collaboration needs? And really that brings us to lesson number two, which is leverage Microsoft Teams as the hub for all your teamwork. Um, like we, we keep on saying throughout this, Teams is where everybody's working. So leverage tools like the personal apps that Valo gives you and Microsoft gives you to expose your intranet as a personal tab, to expose Valo teamwork within Teams to expose different web pages within your libraries, to use tabs to expose the document libraries and lists, use the connection capability to your files to connect a SharePoint document library. And then just make sure people don't leave Teams. And then lastly, um, we've actually developed this thing called the Content Explorer app just for this specific use case where organizations really, you know, their Teams conversations and their teams may be different um, in the way they collaborate, chat their meetings from how their portal structure is. So what we've done is we've created this thing called what we call a content explorer, which is a Teams extension app built on SharePoint framework. It facilitates all the document manage need, management needs. So it allows us to add a um, add this explorer tab, this hub files tab to any team. And you could point to any site collection and it obeys the security that the user has to see the various document libraries and lists and everything from a security perspective. And it'll allow you to kind of expand all the information within each hub site and all the site collections attached to the hub. Or it also shows you all the site subsites within a site collection. So right from there, you're kind of disconnecting the document management perspective from a way a team is collaborating and communicating. And the great thing is this kind of works with SharePoint Online and SharePoint On-Prem because a lot of times they might have a SharePoint On-Prem environment, the client, where they need to, they already have this whole corporate portal perspective and now they're adopting the cloud. And so what they're doing with that is we're able to expose those on-prem documents within their new way of collaborating within their teams. Um, so I know we're at time now, so we'll quickly, I'll pass it off to you to close it up, Shabina. Great. Well, uh, yeah, I know we're kind of tight for time, so we have a few minutes though available for um, questions. I believe we have a moderator here who is available. If not, I think um, you can just unmute yourself and ask any questions. 
Yeah, and before everybody does that, I just want to give a great thank you to Vladimir from Pritza. They've been a fantastic organization to work with, and thank you for joining and giving us your knowledge and giving all the attendees your knowledge. Vladimir, thank you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet like the new technologies and to change <laughs> how we work. Thank you so much. And we didn't pay him to do this. <laughs> So does anybody have any questions? Feel free to come off mute. Okay, great. I guess we were crystal clear. Looks like. I'm not a moderator, but I just wanted to thank you guys. It was an awesome session. And hi, Vlad. It's Oliveira. It's been a long time no see. Hi, Oliveira. I miss those events. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for participating. This was absolutely amazing. We'll be glad to share the recording to, with all of you afterwards. Thank Thanks you so much, much everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks all. Have a great day. You do. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye, guys. Thanks. Great, for session. Great session. Thank you for the great knowledge, guys. Thanks.